Hi, this is Margaret Maloney, and welcome to the Death Dhamma Podcast. Together, we will consider life, death, and impermanence. Because in between birth and death, we lose things, not just our glasses and our keys. We lose identities, relationships, ideas, and more. But what we can gain right now is facing this together, and we will gain freedom, peace, and progress on our path. Hi, everyone. I'm so glad you're here for episode two of season two of the Death Dhamma podcast. Now, oftentimes, I will have a follow-up episode to do a lessons learned from my discussion. And in episode one, which I hope you had a chance to listen to, Justin Whitaker and I talked about loss in terms of loss of a relationship and what it's like to go through that. And there are some great lessons in that episode. And I I hope that you have a chance to listen to it. What I'm doing in this follow-up is I'm including a discussion he and I had when we began speaking, which was about COVID and some different thoughts about COVID and how COVID has shown up in different parts of the world in terms of culturally, how we treat it, and just some of our observations. And I'm using that here because I think that COVID in itself is a giant lesson learned for small deaths, disappointment, and impermanence. And I say that, and I'm not disrespecting the death count, which is the big D, because so many of us have lost people to the COVID pandemic. But our discussion was more of the nature of things that have changed in our society because of it, and maybe some things that we wished were different. And I thought that it was important to include this discussion that we had, because we, all around the world, we are still living with COVID and deciding how to live with COVID. And I recall that in episode one, the very first episode of the Death Dhamma podcast, where I spoke with Noel Alumet, he spoke about how he was a volunteer during the AIDS pandemic. And we did some comparison of things we saw with AIDS and things that we saw with COVID. And I would imagine many of us would have thought that we would be having different discussions today where we are. And some of you are familiar with me saying this phrase, this is how it is, is we still are living with COVID. And so today I want to just give you this short discussion that Justin and I had about different aspects of COVID. Thanks for being here. Even if you had to I'll say go through COVID two times in a sense, in two different ways. Yes, for sure. I mean, Hong Kong handled it so differently than America. They really shut things down. Mm -hmm. And of course, there, there's a culture of caution and I think community cohesion and everybody started putting on masks and being very Mm -hmm. careful and then to kind of watch people in America you know, fight for their individualism, even at the Mm -hmm. cost of everybody around them was uh, sad and worrying. And then, yeah, to come back in the middle of it here, kind of when there was a a dip in in cases, Mm -hmm. um, and then just kind of be on somewhat semi lockdown ever since we have a toddler who, of course, couldn't get hasn't been able to get vaccinated. So you know, just, and then adjusting to that, like, what does our bubble size mean and how do we conduct ourselves? But definitely very, two very different experiences of lockdown. In a lot of ways, I wish I was back in Hong Kong Mm -hmm. because our life there um, was fairly normal, even in the midst of COVID as it was starting to spread around the world because Hong Kong had been so cautious. Cases were very low. And we felt comfortable meeting with friends and passing the baby around and Mm -hmm. not worrying too much. And then back here, because so many people have been so cavalier, um, we have been a little bit more cautious and a bit more worried. 
I, I, I can see that because I think we're at this point, and I don't mean to be negative, but so this, so, and this is, does actually tie into our topic of, you know, things changing and things that are like the little death, but not the big death. I mean, COVID does, has come with a death toll that's the real death. But this season, we're talking more about things that are death of ideas and situations as opposed to sentient beings. And um, we will, I think we will always live with COVID in a way that we will always be aware now of more public health crises, which I think in the United States we haven't been, but I think other countries have been. I will say I've always admired how other countries, we're already using masks during flu season and cold yes. season. And yes. so to them, it's, you know, big deal. Whereas to us, it was a big deal. And, yeah. and I can remember like several years ago, I had a student who came to class one night and she didn't feel well and she wore a mask and everyone was like, you know, thought she had the plague or something because it's just not, it hasn't been part of the culture here. And I, yeah. I guess I hope that it does become part of our culture. I do too. It's just, because it's, it's actually a, so polite. It's a public health uh, courtesy. You're right, polite. Um, that, like you said, has caught on in in East Asia, especially, and um, maybe we'll hear. I hope so. I hope yeah, I think some of us will. Mm. Clearly, we can tell that some of us are never going <laughs> to do that. Yeah, and you know, that's I guess it was a different topic. Maybe season three will be I don't know about death and politics or something. <laughs> Yeah. I'm not ready for that. <laughs> I'm really not ready for that. But but so, yeah, you saw two different sides of a way of life changing. Mm -hmm. And I will tell you that I do wonder sometimes, it makes me want to go back and research the post-1918 um, flu pandemic. Right. Look at records and say, see, how long after that, did we as a society really live with this idea of, because obviously between that time, let's say 1921 and 2020, we, many of us lost sight of all that. Right. Unless you worked in, in, you know, health. And so it's, I think it would be good to look back and study that. How long did the cultural effects of that stay with us? Yeah. And did it even rebound kind of go the other way into the roaring twenties where, mm -hmm. you know, alcohol and music and parties kind of became the the cultural response kind of the mm -hmm. opposite of what public health authorities wanted and uh, are we destined to repeat that or can we can we learn i don't know i mean we've certainly seen a couple of current incidents in the united states of people you know being ready to go to an event and party and have these concerts and then the end result has been stampeding and people being trampled and yeah uh, so yeah 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 and i guess um is it vivek murti the current um, surgeon general just came out yesterday saying be prepared for a massive um teen mental health crisis in america that's it's oh. it's been bubbling up but it's it's very clear our kids are not okay. And that's, that's so worrying. I mean, you and I and people our mm -hmm. age have lived enough that we can say, okay, hunker down a couple of years. Mm -hmm. and, but for, for kids who have been 14, 16, um, at the start of this, I can imagine just so much of their life closing down and that being so painful. So well, so since you know we're on the topic of these different kinds of deaths and things, and I, I promise I'm going to come back to you and ask you for some more specific things, but we are looking at, I'll say, the end of a cultural way of being and the rise of a new way of being in that these young people, so like you have a, a toddler, and, and if your child was older, you may have started to teach your child to, to socially distance. So as not to get ill, but then, so do these kids move forward always feeling like they have to be distanced or, or I don't know. Yeah. 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 So and, and the, it's changing our culture. Huh? Right. And I think worry about the subliminal effects of that in just having, having relationships, having, you know, building bonds amongst their peer groups 
And on the other side, just those who rebel against it and do the absolute opposite. Um, it, it seems to be kind of tearing at our social fabric and mm -hmm. the way we used to build community. And we need to figure, figure that out. How do we connect with people and, and help young people, especially build new connections and new, new people in our community? So many people are moving around, um, but are socially, physically isolated from one another. Um, mm -hmm. how, do we, how do we make connections so that we can have good, healthy communities? Well, this is true. So you moved in the midst of COVID. Uh, you moved to a place you knew. Mm -hmm. So you had people there, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, I do have a friend who she and her husband moved as part of their retirement from an area that they had lived in for 30 years to an area where they're brand new and they're making their way, but it has been difficult for them to form a new friend group. Yeah. Because how do you form a new friend group when you can't friend people? Exactly, exactly. Yeah. And my wife and I, we rented an apartment for a year mm -hmm. and we, we would see the neighbors who would see other people in the apartments or people in houses and we'd chat outside and in normal times, we might have said, let's let's have a little dinner get together and just kind of invite everybody mm -hmm. and get to know one another. Um, but we never did that. So we never really yeah. got to know um, a lot of the people around us. And I can see that kind of being pervasive throughout our society right now. It's really hard to make those good connections because, you know, I see that how that goes back to your concerns about our social fabric, because I want to think that as human beings, we will help one another in times of need. And I think what helps us do that is the fact that I know my next door neighbors. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, like I want to think if even if I didn't know them that if there was trouble, I would help. But if I don't even know them, how do I know that there's any trouble? Yeah. 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 So, so we are in a sense, even though I, I didn't start asking you specific questions, we are in a sense already talking about um, you know, the death of things and ideas and change, which is, is what we're all about on season two here of the Death Dhamma podcast. You've been listening to the Death Dhamma podcast with your host, Margaret Maloney. Thank you so much for being here. Come find me on margaretmaloney.com, M-A-R-G-A-R-E-T-M-E-L-O-N-I.com. And until we meet again, may you be well. May you be happy, may you be at ease, and may you be free from suffering. Bye for now.